Bueno, Rengo Islaria, eh, Carmen Mentilda, Austriatic Dator. Taiso, Egunom. <laughs> Carmen Mentil, I live close to Vienna. Uh, I would like to focus on this history of alpine pearls, of this network of villages, how sustainable mobility became a tourism product, which it didn't used to be some years ago, our marketing activities and some results. And, of course, I would like to also focus on the destinations, because networking alone doesn't work if you don't have these developed destinations, these innovative destinations. And my um, destination I will focus on is Werfenweng in Austria, which is the, also the center of Alpine Pearls and the forerunner. So that's why I combine Alpine Pearls and Werfenweng. Um, and maybe I can give you some outlook to the future, and I will for sure take home a lot of outlook for the future from this conference. Um, all I have heard so far was very, very inspiring. Just a quick look back into the history of the European Alps. Um, the big, the mass tourism villages grew. There was a lot of investment into skiing areas and the really large ones developed heavily and well with all their artificial, artificial snowing and so on. And the smaller ones got a problem. Uh, the smaller ones saw a decreasing number of tourists, um, but still the, car, the number of cars were growing. So some first forerunners acted, acted, reacted and developed the first initiatives for soft tourism. So the like sort of uh, isolated solutions, there was bike rental, even already first e-bike rentals. There were first um, e-mobility test sites with, uh, we used to have French cars. Um, we tried even first models of e-car sharing. I mean, we are talking about 1996, so it's really history. Um, and also the greening of the hotel industry started with some very good hotels really putting energy into this topic. And of course, many more uh, single in initiatives started, just to put it briefly. And one of the forerunners, Werfenweng, this very small village, um, saw exactly this uh, decrease of overnight stays. And similar to the Norwegian destination we just heard of Frank, it was really very similar. Uh, the inhabitants um, with the mayor and the board of the directors of the municipality and especially the hotels started to work on a strategy together. What do we want? And they wanted a new tourism, something you know, to put a mark on the map. And soft mobility was invented as a word. Soft mobility didn't exist beforehand. And they put it on the map with the participation in Austrian model project, um, co-financed by the ministries, and um, in the next years also in European Union projects. So we only entered the European Union in the mid of the 90s, and Werfenweng was one of the first villages to um, to um, join these projects. And uh, from about 2000 on, 2001, really this outstanding tourism offer was developed, which I will show you afterwards, and also the cooperation started. We always went out to uh, talk about our uh, challenges, about our faults we did, about our errors, and about our chances. So we never tried it only in our small village, but we went outside. Um, in 2006, we uh, arranged that Alpine Pearls was founded as a network. Here you see the mayors of all these um, municipalities who are part of it. So more than 11 years history we have. Um, it was strongly supported by the European Union, Union but 2006, the co-financing also stopped. So until then, we were co-financed, but then when the real association, Alpine Pearls, took place, there was no co-funding anymore. So this is a very important <laughs> sentence, because um, as long as you get funding, it's easy to do uh, co-funding. It's easy to do things, but once the co-funding stops, that's the point where people, stakeholders, municipalities, hotels have to take money in their hand, and there it really needs good results in order to keep it up. The objective of Alpine Pearls was always to foster the cooperation in the Alpine space for an outstanding green travel product, focusing on reducing car traffic, soft mobility, sustainable mobility. 
um, 17 tourism associations and municipalities started with the network and we worked all over Austria, Germany, Slovenia, Switzerland, Italy and France. Uh, only Liechtenstein is missing, but they are so small it was a bit, little bit difficult. It will still be possible in the future. We formed a non-profit association and our nowadays 24 members are the Pearls of the Alps. And we stand for sustainable mobility for our guests. The villages have also other USPs. The one is into cure and wellness, like Bad Reichenhall in Germany. One is into uh, hiking, biking, whatever. But they also have the common uh, goal of sustainable mobility. We developed a huge criteria catalog which the um, destinations have to fulfill. There is, of course, uh, if you see them, if you see the criteria in a short list and in a marketing speech, those villages have to be easily reached by train or public bus. Uh, they prevent their own typical regional char characteristics and beauty, so no high buildings, no industry is allowed. The culinary and cultural diversity is promoted, like the example from Norway, so important. Guests do not come to a holiday spot for mobility, they come for good food, good drinks, good culture. Uh, we put a strong focus on renewable energies and we will increase that even, of course. Um, our, in our places, the pedestrian is welcome. The best soft mobility is walking. Cycling is okay, but first of all, walking. So the pedestrian is welcome and is spoilt. On one line, you can pass in our pearls this eco-friendly vacation with full mobility guarantee. Leave your car at home. And if you take your car, try all the amenities, and next time you leave your car at home because you don't need it. You, may, you ha can imagine if you travel from, like in Germany, to the Alps on the beginning of the holidays, there is congestion. You are up on the Brenner Pass for 10 hours in the congestion, standing in the hot sun and your children in the back. These um, models are really quite the go. People like it because it really Im improves and uh, improves your vacation a lot. So how does this mobility guarantee in one spot look? As I said, e easily accessible by train and bus. E very, very important and very, very difficult, the last mile. The last mile from the railway station to your hotel, not to some bus station somewhere. Imagine two people, two kids, all the luggage in winter, even the skis and the boots. You cannot walk 200 meters. You don't want to walk. I mean, you are so young, you might walk. But like a family, you would not walk anymore with all the luggage. So we really need these transfers. They must not be for free, but many pearls now offer them even for free. And uh, once you are arrived and you are in your hotel, all services must be offered. And again, not somewhere there is the electric bike hire, but there must be the last mile to this bike hire again. So a lot of interlinkages, uh, a lot of gaps also. Uh, and what is very important uh, in the beginning, almost yeah, 20 years ago, the municipalities and the tourism organizations worked very well to establish things, to build up things. Uh, uh, some higher stations, some photovoltaic power plant for the electric bikes and so on. So installations, I never saw a problem, like also moving the big street out of the city and so on. That's all no problem, but the problem always still is uh, the service quality, the people who inform the guests. Well, if you write an email, to one of the receptions of one of the hotels in one of our pearls. Can I come for a visit? Three people, three nights. Immediately the answer must be, yes, da -da -da, such and such euros, but please come by train. It's easy, it's super, and we invite you, and it's the best. So the service quality, the information, the trip planning is of the utmost importance. Here you see them. We have about in some two, uh, 12 million guests overnight stays as a sum, and not all of them, not even uh, maybe 10% of them, travel with soft mobility. But it's a huge potential. And let's see the most famous ones Interlaken in Switzerland, where you have the Eiger, Nordwand, and Jungfrau, you really the high mountains and beautiful mountains. A lot of uh, villages in South Tyrol, 
uh, first of all, uh, Vilnius, which is the home of Reinhold Messner. And for me, it was nice seeing Alex Tikon today, because every now and then we meet Reinhold Messner also for our talks. And so this goes together well now. They, you know, they really want to climb highest peaks, and I think we try the same. Um, here you see in the middle of Austria this Werfenwenger we'll be talking about more. Very nice also bled in Slovenia, our first and until now only Slovenian pearl and we will have a second one starting next month with this Bohin and it's very beautiful too. Um, as an organization, uh, it is based in Werfenweng. Each participating community has one uh, vote and they pay per year one member fee, uh, 12,000 euros. Um, so also not only small municipalities, but also destinations can take part. They have their own criteria and so on. Um, what we do is, like as an association, administration and quality control internally, internal networking with all the uh, exchange of experience, study tours, uh, visitations, a large yearly conference, three days only about our efforts and what the villages do and bring their best examples you know, on, the, on stage, and we do workshops and so on. That's internally. And the larger part is outside with marketing. Um, we do media work. We have media agencies in Munich and in uh, France. We do a little bit and a lot we do in Milano, in Italy. We do campaigns. We have our social media channels and so on. And uh, one very important point for our, some of them quite small members are the corporations. We cooperate with railways, tour operators, ministries, and so on. And they would mm, sometimes not speak to the small ones, not have the time for the small ones. But when we say we come with 12 million overnight stays per year, this is quite a weight. And in the best case, they have an ear for us and we can discuss with them future projects. Uh, very new for us uh, since last year, we have uh, been successful again in acquiring European Union co-funding. So that's what we have to develop and realize also. For example, uh, in Interreg, you all probably have heard of Interreg, we do a project about e-mobility and I've just been in Norway to investigate about e-mobility. So we also we go everywhere to learn and to take whatever people are willing to give. Uh, we do a lot of training programs, like uh, Street is a training program for mobility managers in Erasmus+. Plus. You probably know GEMS is a program where a lot of participants, a lot of inhabitants are invited, which I think is really important also. And one is now a mobility camp Alps, where we do bar camps. So quite innovative uh, workshop, workshop sessions, how to involve people again. So you see the focus, involve people. And that's what we all, I think, on these stages say, try to involve as many people. And um, it's not your philo philosophy and your ideas, it, it, it is theirs. In marketing, we do a lot of media trips, which are very interesting. For example, we do alpine crossings. That's from five to 12 days crossing the Alps uh, on a carbon neutral way. So only with um, public transport, bicycling and hiking. And in all our villages, our pearls we, we visit, we do something very special, like we might make a parachute flight or we might have some cheese tasting extraordinarily prepared and so on. So this works really quite well. And of course, newsletters, exhibitions, all the normal marketing program works here. Very important uh, in the Alpine space, we have many languages. And our lang we, we did not find a common language. We work in German, Italian, and in French. It was not possible to put it on an English level, because as soon as a mayor has to really decide on money, he cannot do it. Or, in our case, he doesn't want to do it in a foreign language, but he really wants to know what he's exactly talking about. So we have translators, that's our Italian co-worker Giovanni. Um, and a strong focus, what we have also developed. In the start, we wanted to um, get on the market, you know, for all the people who like to go on the train and the people who like to walk and the people who like to cycle and the people who like to go by bus. So everybody is soft mobile. And we had little, little marketing money for millions of people. Um, in the last years, we, of course, understood uh, very, very important in tourism focus on some 
few target groups. And our target group now is households in large cities who already have no car. In Paris, I don't know, more than 50% of people have no car, or households have no car anymore. Growing number also in Germany. For us, a very, very interesting marking, uh, market because they know how it is without a car and they just want to enjoy their holidays how they used to enjoy it. It is really difficult to convince somebody who lives in a very rural area and needs his car, leave it for your holiday at home, we do offer advantages. I mean, it's important, but it takes a lot of effort. If you tell somebody who has no car, just come, it's normal for us, then they are happy. So focus on a target group which is easily to be reached. Uh, similar with this label, we also have a label for the hosts. Um, as I said beforehand, always easy to install something and to build up something and, and to add up a sign for it. But to really involve the people in the hotels, they are the, are the multiplicators. They are the people who talk with the guests. So we developed this label, which is really easy to achieve if we see that this uh, hotelier wants to be a soft mobility hotelier. It's really nothing big he has to buy. He has only to start to think in sustainable mobility to offer his guests the services which are there anyways. The train, the pickup service, and the walking trails, and so on. Uh, until now, we have already 74 certified hosts, and we see here, for example, a strong wish, a strong will of the hosts to be uh, participants. If we ask new municipalities to be members, at the moment it's very um, restricted. It costs, and what do we have to fulfill? And we have a dangerous situation at the moment with, you know, and the hotels are not like that. They say it's something good, it's something interesting, it brings us guests, and uh, good guests. I mean, also, in my point of view, um, a little bit environmentally, uh, environmentally conscious guests. Okay, we go for it. And of course, I have to add, it doesn't cost them really very much. The label is held and managed by Alpine Pearls. So the hotel doesn't pay extra. This is also important. So we have seen 11 years of work. I'm the director from the start. Uh, we uh, had a lot of changes in the team, as I said before, especially what was a really good thing to do was to engage uh, mother uh, language speaking people, not translators. Up there, they are the good translators. <laughs> For us, it was very important to have the mother tongue speakers with the people. Then it worked easier and they were happy a lot of times. Uh, we have quite big conferences now, also more than 100 people every year. Um, we have about more than 12,000 media clippings, even also um, large TV um, broadcasts. And we do a lot with the influencers. Before it was... Uh, Printed press and TV, now it's blogging. Everybody needs to invite bloggers everywhere and uh, it works quite well, even though it's uh, also not so easy to um, work with them because they are very young, ver very new on the market and you never know, is he or she, is he good? And you have to invest into blogging and we still don't know if it's the right way and the good way, but we think, yeah? So also in Facebook, I hope all of you are already friends with us <laughs> from today on, not 14,000, but 14,080, <laughs> 14,080, and also in our newsletter you can enroll. Here is the president of our association, and he is mayor of this little town I've talked about, Werfenweng. Um, he, I don't know if you see it in the back, this car is an electrical twike, and that's his car. So he does not drive a normal car anymore, but makes all his trips, the smaller ones, the regional ones, of course, with this. And in Werfenweng, uh, south of Salzburg, 900 inhabitants, 260 overnight stays. So it's really a tourism place, but not a mass tourism one. And the core of the touristic product is soft mobility card. This is a card which you get when you receive, uh, uh, which you receive when you arrive. If you leave your car key behind or you arrive by train, about 15% uh, of the people arrive by train, get this card, no problem. 10% um, arrive with the car and are asked to leave their car key and they do it. 
the rest does not leave the khaki. And now imagine, this sounds so quickly told and blah, blah, blah. Imagine you stand at the reception of the tourism information and the German couple with the BMW walks up and you tell them to give them your khaki now for a week. And this is always fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it at all. Uh, they really have to see 100 advantages. Best of all, if they are free of charge, and then. Then the, they ask, where do, where do you put the key? <laughs> so we put them in a, in a visible safe. Here we put your key in the safe, and then it starts to work. <laughs> so small thing in the background, but very, very important. Uh, and then once you have this card, all the offers I'm telling you about now are free of charge, so that's very important to remember. For example, there is this electric uh, bus shuttle bringing you everywhere within the vicinity. There's electric cars for hire, the, uh, Mitsubishi and uh, Zoe, and they will get now the BMW and so on, so they get the Hyundai Ioniq now, so all the newest cars, and you just try them for half a day or whatever, they are available. Uh, if you want to get longer distances by car, because you might go to a large skiing area or to a thermal spa somewhere, there is a biogas car. And the biogas is made of hay. So it's also written on the car, of course. We drive with biological hay uh, and we make biological gas with it. So it's not only enough to do things, but to also put it loud uh, on display. Uh, they have a very nice uh, um, um, fleet of e-vehicles, like you see here, the Biga and the Segway and all the mountain bikes, electrically and not electric, electrically driven, Twizies, uh, scooters, also for small children, little bikes without electricity. Um, they have closed the village town for cars, so your child can learn to cycle there, and a lot of Small children learn to cycle there because it's, if you compare it to your large city where you normally live, this is paradise. Uh, in winter and in summer, they have additionally to all this mobility, guided uh, tours to walk, a bus tour to Salzburg to see, you know, birth house of Mozart and so on, a bicycle taxi if you're down in the uh, valley and you don't want to cycle up and you're tired, they pick you up. There is a swimming lake in winter, it's frozen and you get the skating equipment, you get the ice uh, skates, you get, you get the cross-country equipment, you get a toboggan sledge every time you want it in winter. You can go trekking with llamas or you take a horse coach ride, guided snowshoe walking tours and so on. This is for free, you only show your card. Good morning, I'm here, three children, there we go. So. After three, four days, when the guests see it, they are really convinced that this is good. Uh, it did have a lot of positive effects for this small, not known village. Um, when they started with the actual product card, that was in 2001, the overnight stays really jumped up without any opening of a new hotel. That was the hotels they have. There was a new jump in 2012, but that was a new hotel. The new hotel came, it's a four-star hotel, four-star plus, very, very beautiful, a travel charm hotel. They only came because this village has something very, very special to put on the marketing website. It has soft mobility, green tourism. And then, away from Werfenweng and this one small village, back to Alpine Pearls, one of our points is also to not only develop the small, uh, singular pro products in tourism, but also to have joint, uh, joint offers. For example, just as an example, the pearl necklace trip, where you travel from one pearl to the other. Best example, of course, is in Switzerland, where the train travel is just fantastic, and so we made a nice um, package, Arusa, Disentis, Interlaken, Le Diablare, in some days, and all the people are spoiled with pickup for the last mile, and they're brought there in the morning to the train, and enjoy the be most beautiful views you can imagine. So, um, the, some of the advantages for our members, uh, they have done already a lot but it's so difficult to put it on this huge worldwide market. So we help them, we support this clear message on the market. In our villages, you can enjoy green travels, no matter what. And they can use this label, of course, and they can participate with us in European Union projects, with us or only us as observers, which helps a lot, we have seen. 
uh, we bundle the resources for this eco marketing, communication, PR, and so on. And of course, they want to see a rising number of arrivals. And if the number of arrivals stays the same, at least they want to see a shift in modal split, modal split, the, the split on how people arrive. And as soon as they see that more people come by train than before, we were successful because every car left at home is, we have won. <laughs> Um, of course, we do a lot of uh, exchange of experience and so on. My task is here to present, but to also take home what I hear and uh, hear in the networking sessions and so on and give them back the international ideas and feedback what other regions do and so on. And yeah, with that, we have won also quite some awards. I will get back to that quickly. Uh, what is good is that we can work with and cooperate with larger partners, just to have a, a quick look. And here I just want to show, we have won this Tourism for Tomorrow Award 2011. <laughs> and this <laughs> we <laughs> is it was a quick, quick story. The mayor and I, we were invited to go to Las Vegas for some conference. And we said, no, no time, no money, no, and Las Vegas is not our type of thing. And then we were asked, the guest again, come, come. Then I said, okay, I, I go, I go. And then he said, no, I go also. So we both went to Las Vegas not knowing why. But this conference, about 1,000 people, interesting, tourism, blah, blah, wonderful. <laughs> and then they suddenly started to um, take the award, 2011, and the nominees are, and the winner is, and they made this spot on us, and we were sitting and said, oh, you go, no, you go, <laughs> no, you go, no, I don't go. <laughs> so we went together and we, thank you for this. So it was really a great pleasure, and afterwards you see, it doesn't matter what your daily allowances, and it doesn't matter what your yearly uh, income is, it does not really matter. It matters that uh, you do something which is, um, you know, is, is well received and people like to hear the idea. That's what really counts. Um, for the Soft Mobility Sustainable Tourism Project, it's a great chance for destinations, no question. You see my <laughs> how, how much I like it. Uh, I promise, it's really a great chance. There's so many things out on the market. How would you like to, how, would, how can you stand out? You need to do something for the profile which is outstanding. And in this case, for sustainability, you have only winners. You have the environment with the saving on carbon emissions. You have the enterprises who have, in the best case, rising uh, overnight stays, or at least need less parking to build and to maintain. And you have the happy guests, in the best case scenario, they say, this has been perfect, I, I'll come again. And fourth round, very important, we have left behind for many years the inhabitants. Now it really starts to involve the inhabitants into the whole philosophy. It's again a very economical reason in the background. The reason is that the buses, the shuttle buses, are half empty in the low season. So nobody wants to run half full shuttle buses. So we invited the inhabitants to join the shuttle buses for small money. And now a lot of people use the shuttle buses because uh, like I said, you know, some of them are even free, but normally you pay some euros and you get a transfer which you did not have before. So for the inhabitants um, now in Werfenweng, they can only also hire the electric car. They can also hire the bikes, mountain bikes and electric bikes. This works perfectly well with and only with the inhabitants. Um, just very personal point of view, keys to success. Uh, from all these initiatives uh, and installations and uh, eager hotels, try to build a product with it, a sellable, a marketable product with a name. Because it makes it a lot easier for uh, tour operators and for guests to understand. If you have to start to explain, you have to hand in your car key and then you might get a bike or not. And this is too complicated. You just need this packaged, uh, marketable product. For us in Waffenweng, we call it Samo card and card, and it works. I mean, it has taken long years. <laughs> so customer service cards always make sense. You might have some other I ideas, but just make a product out of it. Involve the hotels. That was something we have missed out in the beginning, and we've really learned the message. Involve the hotels, because they are the key to the guest and the international networking. 
uh, transfer of uh, knowledge, par um, dissemination, um, participation just makes more fun to interact. Uh, then I just repeat uh, the strong focus on one or two or more specific target groups, depending on your budget. And be open for innovations. I'm always happy to see students in the conferences um, because, you know, we have worked a, a long time and, you know, you don't get younger and uh, it's very important to in include the new, uh, the, the, the new tourism students and so on. They have other ideas and they're much more open to ideas. And again, with Alex Chicon, uh, go out, see other people, see other... Um, other countries and forget about the, the borders and so on. Um, yeah, include inhabitants and never ever work with don'ts and forbidden and you are not allowed to always work with advantages and fun and it's good and, you know, and not so much for the environment but for you as a guest. So, you know, work on a very personal, emotional base with the stories and so on. Uh, we want to do in the future even more this profiling. For us at the moment, uh, Werfen Weng is the best example for all of the initiatives. And 23 other villages have to do a lot. It's difficult for them, like, you know, Interlaken is so large, they cannot just take this small village model, but, you know, there needs a lot of development for uh, this profiling. Um, our villages have to develop premium qualities. It doesn't help that you can hike in every pearl, you can cycle in every pearl, but we need the best. We want to work with the best. Um, we want to strengthen the network of these hotels, the Alpine Pearl hosts, and we want to, of course, uh, intensi intensify image campaigns. That's the more difficult thing because you really need to uh, take money and, and get money for it. Um, transnational projects we want to carry on and from this small Austrian association uh, based on Austrian law we now go away and we are in the process of founding an European Union association which is called European Grouping for Territorial Cooperation which is an in European Union instrument that you show on one glance okay this association works internationally so that's better for us. Uh, and we, at the moment, develop similar concept for other regions. Uh, honestly, without a lot of personal or for our company, a lot of win-win uh, situation. It's really giving expertise, criteria, uh, ideas uh, to the Medi Mediterranean. As an associ association has been founded, Mediterranean Pearls. And I've just started with Trans-Danube Pearls. So all around along the Danube, they also want to focus on soft mobility. And we say, just do it. You know, you don't need to pay a license or anything. Just do it. It's so important. And maybe I can also um, uh, motivate you to think about that in the Basque Country uh, or in Spain or in the Pyrenees or, you know, in the area to think about something um, combining tourism offers and networking to a certain specific touristic product. We, Alpine Pearls, we would be very uh, happy to welcome you. All our yearly uh, conferences are open to the public, some of the sessions. Just do join us. It's um, translated French, uh, Italian, German, and if we need Basque language, we arrange it. <laughs> so we are always happy to, to do the utmost. Uh, welcome. Here you can see all these quite spacey cars and there are more to come on Sunday. Uh, and I tell you, Skerik Esko and Rengarte. Skerik Esko, Carmen, Suri, thank you so much. Norvaite Galde Gari Balimbauka, Aprovechatu Rai. Beste laur, bai. Okay. Yes. No. Eh, no. Speak. Yes. Yes. In Castellano. No. Eh, hola. Okay. Where is he? Here. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> eh, bueno, eh, has comentado antes algo sobre placas solares y energías renovables, y en España, por ejemplo. Espera. There's nothing. Yep. Ahora. Yep. 
Jeff. Yeah. Eh, bueno, antes has comentado algo sobre energías renovables y demás. En España, ahora la política que tienen con respecto a las placas solares eh, dice que un, un, un cual, una persona no puede crear su propia energía y quería saber, o sea, en vuestro país, cómo, cómo es la política respecto a eso. Uh, I'm not an expert on that. I'm not an expert on that. But I'm 100% sure at the moment in Austria you're allowed to build up your photovoltaic power plant on the, on the roof. There is even subsidy for it quite large. Also in Germany, I don't know about the other countries. I'm, I'm really sure it must, it should be possible. This sounds like something... Uh, incredible for me that you should not be allowed to do it. I mean, it's quite the diverse. You should be allowed to do it and you should be funded to do it. But that's a personal point of view. It's bueno. incredible if this is the truth. Very astounding. Si, si está permitido, si pagas impuestos a, al gobierno. Que es también... Ok. This one lady saying not really. Wait for the microphone, please. Uh, you can have solar panels, okay? You can produce your energy, but you cannot be connected to the ordinary electrical supply oh. because if you produce uh, extra electricity, you have to return it to them. And that's what is, in theory, forbidden. But if you have uh, solar panels and you have a battery, You can provide yourself okay. and nobody can tell you anything, okay. okay? Okay, that's a little bit different then, but still, like our system in Austria, you put the panels up the roof, you produce what is uh, too much you put into the um, net and you are paid for it. But, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, it sounds a little bit... But do never give up, I don't know, we have many stupid rules and, you know, at one of these days they get changed, hopefully. Thank you, Carmen. Good morning. Um, quería preguntarte, eh, eh, llegar al conseguir el estatus que, que tenéis vosotros en cuanto a, a este tipo de eh, movilidad no ha debido de ser fácil y supongo que es el producto de años de trabajo y de esfuerzo. Y me pregunto, como aquí estamos muy verdes en, en este terreno, eh, me pregunto un poco por los inicios cómo fue, si fue una partida de una iniciativa particular o fue una iniciativa del municipio y qué tipo de apoyos tuvisteis por parte de las, de las instituciones y también por parte del sector privado. Muchas gracias. In, in Werfenweng, where I know all the situation the best, in the beginning of the 90s, um, the tourism overnight stays went down, as I have told you already, and uh, it was a municipal initiative. Uh, there was a very young mayor, 26, 27 years, and he said, we are losing. All our young people go out and never come back. I mean, go out to work and never come back. We need to have a new idea. And uh, he got support for a process of about half a year in 1994, to work out this strategy, strategy together with his inhabitants. That was the initial point, and from this strategy development and idea creation, the headline and the only line left at the end was sustainable mobility. That's how it started. And then, of course, you get, um, as I said, you get this money uh, for having this strategy, and that's a paper, and you put it in the drawer, and that's it. So in 1996, Uh, the Austrian government's three ministries asked for model regions. Who wants to be, which region wants to be a model region for soft mobility? And many, many enrolled and wrote their paper. We are the best and we want to develop. And one of them was Werfenweng and they won. And from that, uh, from that time on, the three ministries gave all their uh, energy and money and funding and support to this little village with 900 inhabitants. And they said, we want to build one model village in Austria. From then on, we can learn. And in 2001, they said, so now we have learned enough. <laughs> you don't get so much 
particular funding anymore, you have to network. And the village was asked again with, like I did a lot of workshops with them, you know, blank piece of paper, what do you want to do in the future? It's not, you tell me, what do you want to do? And they together developed, we want to be the first in Europe, if you talk about tourism and soft mobility, it's Werfenweng. And now, today, I'm invited here and I will tell them, <laughs> you were successful. <laughs> Even the Basque country invites small me to present your um, uh, example, where they have worked on since 1994, with many, many holdbacks and problems and so on. Like, for example, they built this large photovoltaic power plant. The, just to get the uh, allowance to build it is also it's a procedure of years. <laughs> Uh, with electric mobility to get the uh, allowance to put up um, wall boxes to fill them. Today, it's, everybody can build wall boxes and just plug in a car. But 15 years ago, no. Or they ordered the French, uh, I think Renault then was electric, they ordered it and they even made an advance payment and the cars never come, came because Renault stopped to import to Austria. So many, many fallbacks, <coughs> many, many problems and uh, uh, what we call in German a breath <laughs> of 22 years now, more 23 years now. So patience is uh, one of the most important points. And leadership, of course. There's still the same mayor, he's not 26 now anymore, but <laughs> he's still eager to bring it further. And he has also a lot of people talking against soft mobility. Look at these weird uh, vehicles. I mean, a Segway. Who needs a Segway? Who needs a Twike? You know, you have negative people also, and you just have to constantly work on it and be positive, and it, I can only repeat it. <laughs> Axel Chikon, I really like it. Just try it again. If you don't climb the Mount Everest in one day, try it next year or this year even again. Good, <laughs> that's what we also do, and I think all of, of us try to climb our internal <laughs> Everest. Thank you, Carmen. Aurrera jarraitu behar dugu.